Yo, what's up guys? My name is AFC Adinho and welcome to my our YouTube channel. Um, today, uh, I'm going to start a new series. It's called How to Become a Better PvP Player on Pokemon Mo. And basically in this series, I am going to show you guys some tips and tricks to improve your results, which in the long run, uh, will end up making you a better PvP player. And yeah, today um, I'm going to be talking about the uh, uh, Pokemon Showdown Calculator. Because um, most, of, a lot of you guys you always ask, ask me, um, how am I calculating uh, the damage I dish out to someone? Or uh, the damage I am receiving from an opposing attack and knowing whether I get the kill or knowing whenever I live a certain attack. And that's what I'm going to show in this video. Uh, in this series, I will also keep the video short. So you can rewatch them a few times. And I just, I just uh, point out the most Im uh, important information. But yeah, I'll leave the link to the Pokemon Showdown Calculator in the description. And let's, let's open it up for now. So I um, have the screen capture here and let me do this so this is the pokemon showdown calculator um very simple though uh, let's say you have a guard chomp and you want to know if you could live i don't know a drain but close combat uh from conkelder so you have a conkelder here close combat uh element goods uh let's say they're level 50. Flame Orbed, Flame Orbed uh, Close Combat is going to knock out Garchomp from Philip, uh, Full HP if, um, provided he's uh, an offensive set. This, this is basically how you can calculate damage, uh, but whenever you are battle battling, uh, you want to be efficient as possible when doing these calcs, because you don't want to waste too much time on it, but you do want to be sure. I don't want to make any mess ups in the cocks because that can um, lose you games as well. So I want to show you some important feature here. Um, first of all, let me go over a few things first. Because uh, as you guys know, uh, Pokemon Poke MMO is kind of based of uh, Pokemon Black and White. So some people will use this calculator, um, but there's a difference because uh, this calculator um, is using the Pokemon Black and White uh, mechanics, and the problem there is that certain things in Pokemon Black and White are different. For example, critical hit damage is different in Pokemon Black and White than it is in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Uh, so, uh, when using this calculator, um, it's not accurate with certain damage. Uh, for example, as well, uh, the burn take you take twelve percent from burn in Pokemon Black and White. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, you take only six percent. And cal calculating burn damage in a certain damage is also really important to, to know uh, whether you live a certain hit or not. And yeah, certain base powers have also been changed um, I, I cannot come up with an with an example right now but yeah to have the most accurate damage uh, i use the sword and shield calculator the only time uh, you would want to use a pokemon black and white calculator is um if the calculation involves a steel type and a po an attacking uh, ghost or dark type move because in Pokemon black and white steel types actually do resist a uh, dark type and ghost type attacks So for example, if you have a scissor if You have a scissor and you have a Gengar um, Let's say shadow ball Here You can see shadow ball is only doing 27 percent, right? Uh, but if we change it to sword and shield And we'll use the same uh, Same situation Shadow Ball suddenly does 55.8%. That's because um, after gen, after gen, gen 5 and Gen 6, uh, Steel-types don't resist 
uh, ghost and dark type attacks anymore. So that's the only time you would maybe want to use the Pokemon Black and White Calculator. Uh, also, something you have to keep in mind when using the Sword and Shield Calculator is that the fairy type doesn't exist. So if you have a if you have a Togekiss, if a Togekiss, you in Sword and Shield is weak to Scizor, as you guys can see, it's almost doing 70%, right? Uh, but when you're using the black and white calculator and then go to scissor bullet punch doesn't that's only about 30 percent and that's because the fairy type doesn't exist so that's something you have to keep in mind also uh when calculating shadow ball damage uh in Pokemon Black and White, in po Epoch MMO, Shadow Ball doesn't do any damage to Togekiss because Togekiss is a normal type, and in Sword and Shield, he's a he's a fairy type. So you have to keep those are the things you have to keep in mind. But mostly, I'll be using the Sword and Shield calculator. But how can we be as a, as a, as a efficient as possible uh, with this calculator, right? Uh, here below, you'll see the option Import Export. This is where you can import your team. And let me show you. So I'm actually going to open up our Patreon for this. Uh, yeah, the Patreon subscribers know. Uh, but yeah, uh, I basically post all my teams on Patreon, guys. All the poker pace, as you guys can see, if I scroll down, all the teams. And if you if you look at continue reading, uh, you'll see um, me explaining the teams or certain MP spreads. Let me show you guys one of the teams. Uh, no, it's not this one. It's... Hold up. So here, I have certain schedule... Uh, you have certain scheduled posts. And for example, if we open up this one, as you guys can see, here I just explain everything, how to use the team and... What, what the EVs are for and stuff. Uh, this will usually help. Uh, people with team building as well. Uh, so it's not not only me posting poker pastes on Patreon, but also explaining the teams. But yeah, let's for example take the Road to Top 100 Season 9 team right here as well. I have an explanation of the whole team. But if you click on this, the poker paste will open. Uh, you guys are lucky. I'll just share this with you guys. This poker paste. But you can uh, you can copy. So copy this whole thing and then import it into um, put it here into Pokemon Showdown Calculator. And what you can do then is only show important sets. Then whenever I need to do a certain calc, I can go to my guard jump, right? I have to keep in mind, Poke MMO uses level 50 instead of level 100. So you have to change the levels. Uh, but yeah, whenever I create a Poker Paste, I always change them to level 50. And then, for example, if I need to do a Conkeldor Calc, right? Uh, Conkeldor with Close Combat, I'll change it to level 50. And then we'll see, okay, Close Combat is going to kill me. So I cannot safely switch in my Garchomp to a Conkeldor. Because Close Combat is going to kill me. But, yeah, let me show you guys some examples. Uh, so I'll show you some uh, situations in which I am using the calculator to uh, decide what I'll do next. So first... This example, um, I have a Machamp in, uh, my opponent is going to bring in the Torkoal and I need to know if I need to know if my Machamp can knock out Conkeldor at 50%, right? Uh, so I, I'm hovering my mouse I'm, I'm hovering my mouse on the Pokemon uh, to see at how much HP they are at, right? Torkoal right now is at 75.1%, uh, but he's going to take Stealth Rock damage, so he's going to be at 50.1%. Here I'm already Kalking, uh, but let's just wait till Torkoal comes out, right? But Torkoal comes out here. And here, he's at 50.3%, so we're, we're going to open up our calculator again. And I'm gonna go to my champ. This is our champ set, and then we're gonna call Tor Torkoal. So we just look up a Torkoal set, assuming he's max HP, max 
defense, right? Change it to level 50, and now we need to know, is close combat gonna kill him? We're doing at least 50%, so that means I will most likely knock out the Conkelder. Uh, so this is why I decided to go for the close combat here. And as you guys can see... I click close combat here, and Turgle is gonna die. Because if the close combat doesn't kill him there, uh, it can be bad because my champ can a uh, mock punch win uh, this game uh, and click facade on um, the whimsicott. So my champ, if I don't kill him there, I might need to consider maybe switching out and try beating Torkoal another way. But because I was able to kill him, I just went for the close combat. Uh, next example here. I have my Machamp in, uh, yeah, I kill his Mammoth Swine, then Miensho comes in with full HP, uh, but he's gonna take spikes and a stealth rock damage, right? So here we see my, that we are killing Machamp. I take burn damage here, and then um, his Miensho is going to come in. And now I need to know, is, is my Mark Punch gonna kill him, right? So we're gonna open up our calculator again. Uh, we are going to select our Machamp. Make sure to click on only show important sense because if you don't, uh, you actually have to type in your Pokemon, uh, which is which takes a lot of time. So only show important sets. Uh, we are going to uh, Machamp again, and now we need to know if we knock out Mian Shao from full HP, right? Uh, in this case, it's showing uh, an assault vest set, but. Uh, just assume he's not running any HP, he's not running any defense. How much is our Mach Punch gonna do at, at level 50? It's doing 55.7 to 66.4. If you look at the HP right now, uh, you, you'll see uh, he's. This is not gonna kill. Like, he's about. He took Spike, Style Rock, he's about 80%, right? He's about 80%, and that's not gonna kill. So. Instead of mark punching here, I decide to switch out. Because if he's choice scarfed, if he's choice scarfed, he can only kill my guard jump with close combat. And if he's life orb, uh, I just have to wait for him to take a bit more damage with the life orb. So I just, if he isn't choice scarf, my guard jump will kill him as well because my cho my guard jump is choice scarf. So I just sack high dragon there, and my opponent went for close combat. And as you, as most of you guys know, close combat does lower your defensive stat. So here, here he lowers his def defense, and I, I I believe we don't see him taking life orb damage. So this might be Choice Scarf, Ami and Xiao. So now we need to Kalk again, uh, Machamp. But this time with um, with Mian Xiao having lowered his defense by one stage, and this is how you do it. Next to his next to Mian Xiao's defense, that you can see plus one and minus one. Uh, because of close combat, his defense went to minus one. Suddenly we're doing 83.5 percent, right? But if he's Choice Scarfed and we get the lowest possible roll, uh, we might still not knock him out. So I went into Garchomp instead. I went into Garchomp instead. And if he's Choice Scarfed, he's going to kill my Garchomp. But... He is scarfed. Uh, that means he has to click Close Combat again. And then he'll be at minus two. So then he's going to lower his defense again. And then suddenly, uh, Mark Punch will kill him. And this is basically why I kept my Machamp alive instead of um, instead I kept my Machamp alive instead of um, sacrifice instead of uh, staying in last time. Yeah, yeah, my opponent decides to forfeit here, but it, it, if he had knocked me out with close combat, I would just bring him a champ and win the game with Mark Punch anyway. Uh, so that's that example in killing him, killing our opponent. Uh, here though. Uh, here we have an example. Let's see what happens. Ah, I kill. This is this is this is a different team though. Uh, but the EVs on the Garchomp are the same. This is just 
The only difference is this is a um, this is a choice band card chomp. So I kill the the Jellicent. And then Mien's Chow comes in, and I don't have a good switch for this because if I switch out, uh, something on my team will die. Um, as you guys can see, my Hippowden is gonna take Stealth Rock damage. He's about 75% right now, so he's gonna take Stealth Rock damage, and then, then he's gonna die to it to it KO from close combat. Hydreigon is gonna die, and Infernip is gonna die, but I need to keep Infernip because Infernip was actually choice carved in this game, uh, meaning that it, Infernip is the only one that can kill Superior. So here I needed to know, is my Garchomp going to live a life or close combat from me and Xiao? So we're gonna open up the calculator again this time. Let's choose the Garchomp here. You can also type in the name. Garchomp. And now we need to look at me and Xiao with Jolly Nature, 252 attack and a life orb, right? So close combat. As you guys can see, Close Combat does a maximum amount of damage. The maximum amount of damage uh, Close Combat does to an offensive guard jump is 87.9. I did take Stealth Rock damage, uh, but as you guys can see, without the Stealth Rock, it's not a it's not a KO at all. So I guarantee live this attack. Uh, my guard jump lives this attack 100% as long as my opponent doesn't crit. So this is why I stayed in. Because otherwise I would have sacked Hippowden. But because I live this attack, uh, that means I can kill Mian Shao. You see me you hear me say this as well. If I live close combat, I'm gonna stay in. This is one of the future videos, by the way. <laughs> but a little bit of a spoiler, but uh, I don't think it's too huge. So I Earthquake here. He close combats me, and I need to live this. And as you guys can see, I live at 5 HP. But from the Kalk, he got a really high roll. But from the Kalk, guys, you guys see, I was guaranteed going to live this attack. Because I was about um, 90... 92% or something, uh, 90, 94%, 93%, which is above 87.9. So I was guaranteed living this attack. So I live this attack. This is the turn I need a gun. And he was live, but and I knock him out. And you guys can see. And then um, I had I had Infernape for the. I'd Infernip for Superior and Blissey, and I'd her Dragon to beat the Hippowden, which, but Hippowden was also really low. Um, so that's an example in uh, Gawking to uh, find out if you're going to live an attack. And uh, now here I have an other example here. Um, I need to know if I die to a crit from Bullet Punch. Well, I didn't need to know. It's was the only option. But if, for example, if you want to find out if you are living a crit, which can sometimes um, mulch your decision, decision as well. So this is a scissor. I, uh, we find out later that he's choice bandit. Uh, but for this calc later as well. For this calc, we're gonna go to our high dragon. Uh, high dragon here. And we're gonna look at scissor. And uh, showdown gives us a life orb. But we are going to go look at the maximum amount of damage he can do that turn. And that is with a choice band. So as you guys can see, 55.6 to 66.4. That's the max. 66.4 is the maximum amount of damage you can do to my Hydreigon. Um, but if we look at the crit. So here you see the bullet punch uh, move. Next you can check with a crit how much damage they'll do with a crit. And with the crit, it's doing a maximum amount of 99.4. But as you guys can see, we are at 100%. So even with a crit, he cannot kill us. This, so the game is won here. But if we use the black and white calculator, guys, let me show you. So only import, only show important sets. And scissor. Uh, let's change this to choice band as well. So 
So basically here you see it, it's doing the same damage, but now when I look at a crit, look it does way more and that's because the crit damage actually changed um, in the following seasons. That's why I'm using this uh, to be as up to date as possible. I'm using the sword and shield uh, calculator. So we know he's living and this is also guys, this also is a good way uh, to find out if he's choice banded or not. Uh, to find out if something is choice ban banded or not, uh, you have to calc after they do the damage. So for example here, I click faint or he bullet punches me. And here I see him doing, as you guys can see, 58.1%, uh, which is a lot in my mind. So if you are wondering if this is normal damage, you can open up the calculator again. Um, show important sense only. Go click on Hydreigon. Get the scissor again. So for example, um, let's call it without a choice band, right? Without any items. So with, with leftovers, for example, it's only doing this amount of damage. But he did 58 point... Um, he did 58.1%, right? Uh, meaning that he couldn't be... He couldn't be leftovers, he couldn't be choice carved uh, be because he did normal damage and with the life orb, we didn't see life orb recoil, right? It's a bit messy, but we after he did his bullet punch, he didn't take life orb recoil, uh, but he did so much damage. So now we know he's choice banded. I guess choice... Uh, choice band uh, increases the attack damage. Yeah, we, we live that attack 100% and then we just knock him out. Um, so that's another way to look at the cog. Uh, to, to find out if someone is a choice bandit. If, for example, guys, if you have a... Um, let's say you have your scissor in. Your scissor and your opponent is using a, a guard jump, right? And let's say the guard jump is at... 80% 80% HP he, he clicks earthquake on you He clicks earthquake on you um, And he does let's say he does 60% to you he does and He does 60% to you he clicks earth earth he clicks earthquake he does 60% to you But you don't see life warp uh, after he damaged you you don't see him gaining leftovers but he cannot be choice banned because he only did 60%. If he was choice banned, guys, he would do at least 88%. But he only did 60. In those situations, you can kind of assume they might be choice carved. That's a way you can find out, find out if someone is choice carved. Um, last example. Last example. So I have this Machamp in, right? This is a bit of an uh, advanced example. Reuniclus comes in. I click facade. I, I click facade. Um, I do about 85% to him. I do about 85%. So we're going to open up our calculator. Look at our Merchamp. And then uh, go to our Uniclus set. Facade would only do... Uh, about 50 to uh, to 58 uh, percent. If he's like, if he's running max max HP and max defense, but we did 85. We did about 85 percent, right? So then we can assume, okay, he might be max HP with max special attack. That means he cannot run any defense. He's probably modest as well. Damn, we are still doing a lot, but <laughs> the we're still doing a lot, but I guess we he must be some crazy set, but we can assume he's max special attack. He's max special attack. Knowing this, if he, him being max special attack, um, we can choose what to do next. Uh, most of those, I, I actually made a misplay here. As well, after this damage. Because he trick rooms here. So that means he's going to kill my Machamp. So I actually need to know if my Garchomp is going to live Psychic. 
from this Rhinoclus. As you guys can see, I played, a bit, I played a bit forward. I should have clicked Facade in case he did go for recover here. Because whether he is at 20%, whether he's at 20% or at 5%, it doesn't matter. Garchomp is going to kill him in both cases. But if he does end up going for recover, then I actually lose. So I should have clicked Facade here. Made a huge misplay. But yeah, we didn't see leftovers on him, right? We didn't see Rocky Helmet. So in a lot of cases, those... Because um, he cannot be choice packs because he did, he did use Trick Room. So in the, in most cases, he'll be uh, running Life Warp. So here, I need to know. Is my Garchomp going to live Psychic? Is my Go Garchomp going to live Psychic from full HP, right? With, with, him, with him having a max... A mech special attack with a life orb. So we're gonna open up our cog. Uh We have modest life orb max attack, and we go to Garchomp here. Size choke. He did, he just used psychic on my. Um, he just used, used psychic on my Machamp. So psychic only does 66.1 to 78.6. So the only way he can win at that point is if he crits me with psychic. That's the only way he can win. So we're gonna open up this. Oh, open up this again. And as you guys can see, he's gonna click Psychic on me. I, I didn't scroll down on the battle tab, which is unfortunate because now we cannot see the exact damage. You should not be able to help me out. Trying to focus. He, oh, yeah, it was actually Psy Shock. Never mind. I thought it was Psychic. But Psychic, that's about 55 50 to 55%, right? If we open the calculator, about 55%. So he, he did go for Psy Shock. He was Life Warped. And yeah, even. Because he was size shook, even with a crit, he couldn't knock me out, as you guys can see. So, in that sense, um, we would have won anyway. So, we should have clicked. We should have clicked. Um, we should have clicked Vassal with the Machamp. But, yeah, this is basically um, the rundown on how to Kalk. I think I made this video a bit longer than it had to. But I hope I was. As clear as possible uh, this is basically how you can calculate damage so to recap guys um, you can use the calculator to find out if, whether you can kill something or not and you can use the calculator to check if you can live an attack or not uh, you can use the calc you can use the calculator to um, find out if someone has a certain item or not etc etc you can find out a lot of information with the calculators i hope this video was helpful uh, let me change the screen again <laughs> i hope the video was helpful uh, if it was guys uh, make sure to um subscribe to the channel like this video as well and yeah i hope you guys are excited for the next episode like in the series how to become uh, becoming in the series become a better pvp player uh, Pokemon MMO, uh, I'm sharing you guys some tips and tricks uh, on these kind of things. So calculating is really important and I have many more tips and tricks to share with you guys. So I hope you are excited. So definitely subscribe to the channel. Only 45% of the viewers are subscribed, uh, which is insane. So there's a lot of potential in this channel. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have any questions. And if you have even more questions, you can join our Discord server, discuss this game. We have a lot of people. Uh, talking in the discord server as well and yeah, if you are interested in my teams in the teams i use in my videos you can check out my patreon i post all my teams there all the information i write down guides on the team uh, why i chose a certain pokemon and what the pokemon does uh, why i chose certain ev spreads uh, i explain it all there so definitely check it out and yeah i hope 
you have a wonderful day and I hope this video was very helpful to you. Peace out and I see you guys in the next video.